Imbandiam, Imbandiam, Gai Kalil, Imbandiam, 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 Hey, hey. My soul, my spirit, my essence is crying for its roots. That is what the song says. Togo zani boko konda uwe. Tobela tobela kamaku khanyali sidi makosi. Welcome to Gogo Kobispam Evocations. Today, we are talking about Iburu, Igobongo, Situntu, Isilau. A point to remember. Before you start, cultivate humbleness in your spirit, patience on your knees as you embark on your journey, and a childlike teachable spirit in your heart. What you are about to consume is food for the spirit. You have to purify your heart. This is sacred food for the spirit. What is Ibudu? Who uses Ibudu? How long do they use it for? How do they use it? And where do they use it? Those are some of the questions. Igobongo is roots sometimes bark from herbs. Is it just any tree that is used? No. It's specific sacred trees. And they're not one size fits all for every spirit guide, type of spirit guide or clan. Ibulu, Isilau Situntu, Igobongo is known as the sacred food of the ancestors. And it's not every Jack and Jill who can put it together for you. Or akumisele amakobong, or akupetlele, as the Kosa people would say. You don't consume these sacred herbs anywhere and anyhow. The process is quite ceremonial and sacred. Prayer, fasting, and meditation forms part of this process, as it's the onset of your vision quest. It's a process to facilitate the opening of your communication portal and ancestor settling process within you. The place and even how you are dressed for this process is under instruction. For instance, you can't be sitting on a chair or bed and eat or sip ikobongo as if you are sipping a mojito. Uh -uh. Oh no. Calamities would befall you because of the taboo you have committed. With everything ancestor or those related, each activity, you have to set the intention and be led by a mentor, whether physical or through dreams, which would be spirit. The instructions to eat Ibudu would be either from visions, dreams, or consultation. Some people do it to find their earthly purpose and align with it. Some to unleash and access their fortunes, while for some others, it's to evoke success and esteem. Can it ever happen? That though you have eaten the sacred ancestral food, nothing happens or things get worse. Yes. Then you ask, but why, Coco, why? There are numerous causes and consequences, such as being led or mentored by someone who does not honor the process by purifying themselves and setting the right intention for you and with you as a facilitator. Or consuming Ibulu when you are not meant to. Or consuming the wrong ibulu for the wrong spirit guides, e.g. Malopo or Musutu, they have their own. Then Umguni have their own. Umdigi have their own. Umdawe have their own too, etc. For instance, Amakosa, the Kosa people have over 50 Islao for different clans. Mastamagusha. Also, it can happen that you enter that space alone without your ancestors and spirit guides because. There is a common fallacy nowadays where people do not go through the process of fixing their lineage and alters and align those so you have a good and solid foundation. Instead, people opt for shortcuts which never yield them the desired result. Mm -hmm. Go consult and get proper guidance. And how often do you eat a kobongo? Well, it depends on the instructions as those who requested it will let you know when you are done. It can be seven days, two weeks, a month, two months. It depends, especially for those who are the chosen ones. It can be as long as they are a 
the healer training home. And you ask how many times a day. Again, the instruction is key. It can be morning and evening or once a day, four times or five times a day at specific times, facing a specific direction. Eko bongo can be eaten by anyone. It's not only for those persons who's traditionally gifted. What determines who is the need and the instruction. In some cases, the chosen or traditionally gifted eat ibuju to plead their case with their ancestors, pleading leniency for time before they can accept the gift, e.g. to be allowed to finish high school or university, etc. Where do they eat ibuju? Is it at the healer's home or at your own home? When you are also a patron initiation school, it would definitely be that space, which is your spiritual home in a specific spot. Okay, there is a whole secret procedure while eating the sacred spiritual food. I deliberately won't delve into the finer details because sacredness of the journey must surely be held. Some people eat a makobongo at their home prior to starting their journey as part of coming and um, managing the guys to keep a certain degree. It's like when a baby smells breast milk, they calm down. Even just from the sand. It's not only the chosen who eat amakobongo, by the way. Anyone can eat amakobongo when instructed to do so. And some initiates or guides, they initiate their chosen through dreams at times. They will downright give you exact roots and herbs to use or a mentor would every once in a while have to assist and guide. Also, as a point to note, uh, in some spaces, the guides would only need uh, Amako Bongo just to settle in you. Then there will be no further initiation required. And then they go about their business and you go about your own. There are some restrictions while eating Amako Bongo, such as no sexual activity, including self-indulgence of porn and masturbation. <laughs> Limitations on some food types. And uh, when you eat ikobongo, you go through so much. And uh, your spirit guides, they need this to be healed. And when we are done, you will burp and burp and burp. Because the spirit guides are saying, thank you. We have re received what we needed from you. Excuse me for that. You want a you won't eat a makobongo forever, Bokoko, no. But you must know patience and perseverance will see you through this. Catch you on the next one. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. What you find value in might be what the next person needs. Be kind and generous. Love and light. Ndawe. Chokos and